God works in you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even in your worst failures, he never left you. He's telling you, I'm giving you a fresh start. Your God can turn something really bad into something really good. Go to God. He can handle this stuff. A lot of people misunderstand the book of Genesis. You know, when people hear the word Genesis, oh, that's where Adam and Eve fell. That's where humanity fails God. That is when, yeah, so it's about original sin, brother Bo. You know what? That's not the only message of Genesis. The book of Genesis is also about original innocence. That from day one, from, from the get-go, from the very beginning, God said, you're very good, my, my dear friend. friend. This, this book that I wrote is very, very, very special, and, and I'm so excited to share it with you. God made you good. This, this is book one of the series, a whole series on how Jesus read his Bible. You will not only grow closer to God when you read this book, you will not only have, you know, transforming your life and realizing, my gosh, God made me wonderful and good and amazing. But, but you're going, going to deepen your appreciation and understanding of Scripture like, like never before. I, I want, want you to grab, grab this book and change your life. Your dream home deserves a dream neighborhood. Welcome to Ayala West of Heights and the Navali area, just 45 minutes away from Metro Manila, with resort-like amenities to enjoy, so you can feel like you're on vacation every day. Stay active and make new friends in our free clubhouses at Ayala West of Heights. Experience nature, the great outdoors and breathtaking views with wide open spaces and stunning views you'll find the peace and serenity you deserve our real estate brokerage features Ayala West Grove Heights and the Navali area two of the most sought after communities in the country by Ayala land we can help you find your dream home, whether it's in Ayala West Grove Heights, the Nuvali area, or anywhere in Metro Manila. With our network of thousands of broker partners, we can also help sell your property anywhere in the country. Must see properties. Your property vision brought to reality. Invest in real estate and secure your family's future. Call 0920-913-8563. Finally, the all-new Feast mobile app is here. Reflect daily with prayer devotionals. Watch the Feast series talks. Get to know our Catholic faith more with prayers and devotions. Pray on your own. Pray with a whole family. Pray with a feast community. Be equipped in your service with our discipleship resources. Read and find wisdom for different aspects of your life with our growth plans. Journal your thoughts and prayers and write your dreams. The Feast app be your spiritual companion, your daily motivation, and your safe space. 
Download the Peace app today. Feed your faith. From the beginning, humans weren't meant to live alone. Life has always been designed to be shared. It's in our genes. It's who we are. Ang ginagawa kasi ng Peace Mercy Ministries ay mag-raise ng funds at at the same time mag-raise ng awareness. So para malaman ng maraming tao yung about sa Grace to be Born, Annalive, Jeremiah Foundations, at sa lahat ng sampung foundations na tinutulungan ng Peace Mercy Ministries. Because life isn't just about us. It's bigger than us. It's about embracing the elderly so that they may not feel forgotten. It's about caring for the unwanted child. It's about giving back worth to the abused. It's about granting the next generation opportunity. It's about creating a home for those without. It's about building up those who can. It's about assisting families in need. It's about giving second chances to those who seek repentance. It's about helping those struck by disasters. It's about listening and embracing people in crisis. It's about sharing God's love to the lost and broken. So yung mga biggest projects natin, napakadami na natin campaigns na ginawa para po sa lahat ng foundations natin. But by far, no, yung ginagawa talaga natin ay kinukonek din natin yung mga tao sa community natin. Kina, iniimbitahan natin sila na tumulong, iniimbitahan din natin silang maging aware kung ano po yung ginagawa din natin dito sa Peace Mercy Ministries. I am supporting, supporting Anna Wim kasi Anna Wim is the extension of my love. Lalo na sa, sa mother ko who passed away years ago. It doesn't matter how big, how small yung nagiging contribution or yung nagibigay natin sa ating mga lolo at lola. What matters is you do it with love at napapasaya natin ang ating mga lolo at lola. Ito yung mga ginagawa namin by which we come together to form communities and uh, fellowship families dito sa loob ng uh, prison facility to give them the Word of God, to, to give them hope, to support them sa pagbabagong buhay at ipaalala sa kanila ang takilang pagmamahal ng Panginoon na tanging nagbibigay ng lakas at pag-asa sa ating lahat. This is where we can make that change. This is the reason. Because life ain't just about us. We live for a cause greater than ourselves.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration on this Easter Sunday of the Lord's Resurrection. Our celebrant for this Eucharistic celebration is His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Manila. With con celebrants, Father Bob McConaughey, Father Mark De Manuele, and Father Miko De Lera. With the Master of Ceremony, Federico Garcia, and Assisting Deacon, Reverend Adrian David. Let us all rise as we begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
as one community of faith, as one church, with spirits high and overflowing gratitude poured into our hearts. Let us proclaim, Jesus our Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Today we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead. This is the central mystery of our faith as Christians. As the Apostle Paul tells us, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith in him is useless. We too are invited to rise with Jesus, to cling to Jesus as Mary of Magdala wanted in the Gospel. As we continue this Mass, let us learn to die to our old self, our selfish desires, hopelessness, and misery. Let us rise as new men and women, repentant, full of hope and happiness. Our confidence lies in Jesus, who conquered the power of sin and death. United with him, we too can, can become new persons. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word. The resurrection of Jesus is at the heart of the early Christian kerygma, that is, the public announcement of God's salvation through the victory of Jesus over death. 
The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks.
through baptism, the Christian shares in the death and resurrection of Christ. As a new person, the Christian dies to his wicked ways and patterns his life to that of Christ. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough. Inasmuch as you are unleavened, for our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the sequence and the Holy Gospel. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer you thankful praises. A lamb and a sheep redeems. Christ, who is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contented in that combat is stupendous. And the Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living. The glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting. This shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee, he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victory king ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us feast with joy in the Lord. With you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter 
and arrive at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the homily. My dear concelebrating priests, assisting deacon, Brother Bo Sanchez, serve. Feast builders, servants, volunteers, and members of the feast community, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. On behalf of the entire people of God in the Archdiocese of Manila, I bring you joyful greetings of a blessed and happy Easter. Maligayang Pasko ng pagkabuhay sa inyong lahat. On this day, the Sunday of Sundays, we celebrate the very reason why we are Christians. The very reason why we gather for the feast every Sunday. The very reason why we believe in Christ. Christ the Lord is risen from the dead. The light of Jesus has shone, and darkness has not overcome it. Love is stronger than death, for love entered death and conquered it. How does the risen Lord look like? Was the resurrection similar to the resuscitation we see in hospitals wherein doctors and nurses try to revive the person by recovering the heartbeat and the brain waves? No. The resurrection is totally different from this. Jesus truly died. He was in the tomb for three days, and he descended into hell. But on the third day, the Father raised him up, not merely restoring his breath and pulse, but totally transforming his, his entire person into the fullness of life and glory. This is what St. Paul meant when he told the, De the Corinthians that in the resurrection, we will gain spiritual bodies, imperishable and glorious. In the resurrection, we become totally new persons. We don't return to our old selves, 
but transform into our better selves. We have a word for this in Tagalog, banyuhay, which means bagong anyo ng buhay. My wise brother, Bishop, Bishop Ambo David of Caloocan, wrote a lovely poem that beautifully captures this mystery of Banyuhay. He showed how our earthly experience is filled with signs of Easter, signs of Banyuhay, mga nagbabagong anyo ng buhay. Creeping caterpillars become gorgeous butterflies. Little seeds become mighty trees. Frail eggs become soaring birds. And the zygote in the womb become adult humans. The mystery of Banyuhay is exciting, but it can also be scary or even traumatic. The Paschal mystery of death and resurrection can fill us with doubt and anxiety. We know that unfortunately, not all caterpillars become butterflies. Some of the pupae get eaten by critters. Not all seeds become trees. Some would rot in the soil. Not all eggs get hatch. Some chicks die in the shell. Not all fetuses are born. Some are miscarried. Some even aborted. But more than daunting, Banyuhay is awe-inspiring. Imagine the caterpillar wrapping itself and falling into deep slumber, then walking up with brilliant, lovely wings. Imagine the seed burying into the soil, then breaking through bright green leaves. Imagine the cheek cracking the shell, then seeing its mother hen. And imagine the human infant passing through the dark canal of the womb, then seeing a great light and hearing the voices of fellow human persons. As they transition to new life, they are still themselves. But with Banyuhay, they have opened to a new level of experience and have become wonderfully different. In the same way, the reason Jesus is the same Jesus who walked the earth and continues to be with us, but now revealing more fully the glory of the Father. Brothers and sisters, the Lord's empty tomb is like the pupa's empty chrysalis or the seed's empty husk or the chick's empty shell or the newborn infant's detached placenta. We won't see the caterpillar in the hanging chrysalis anymore. We have to look up to see the colorful 
butterfly. We won't find the seeds in the ground anymore. We have to look up to the encompassing canopy of the tall tree. We won't see the chick in the shell anymore. We have to look up to the high soaring eagle. We won't find the infant in the womb anymore. We have to look up to see a grown-up human person. And so, what should scare us is not our creaturely, creaturely infirmity and mortality. What we should avoid is the stagnation and decay brought about by staying in the comfort and shells, in the comfort of shells and wombs, staying in our conveniences and conventions because we are too scared of the life beyond, because we are too afraid of Banyuhai. There is light outside the shell. There is a hand that will catch us outside the womb. There is life beyond death. It is a life that is more colorful, more glorious, and more fruitful. May nakaantabay na kamay ng pagsilang at pagbabanyuhay. May nakaantabay na pagkabuhay at pagbabagong buhay. Let us rise then through Jesus who rose from the dead. We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Amen. Please stand for the renewal of baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, 
the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Christ is the Lord of life. Raised up by the Father, in turn he will raise us up by his power. Let us address our petitions to the Heavenly Father as we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. May the church and her leaders courageously proclaim Christ's victory to a world in agony and in fear through bearing weapons of love that we might live and remain in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the ecclesiastical and government leaders die to their personal interest so that like the good shepherd, they may serve your people faithfully through listening and journeying with them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May all of us, baptized believers, live our baptismal promises and help create conditions that will enable us to celebrate Easter as the time of salvation to be shared by all, freed from bitterness, division, and unhappiness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May there be new hope and life for those who are struggling and in pain today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the light of Jesus' family be a channel of Christ's love, mercy, and compassion to the poor and to those who suffer and to the unchurched, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord inspire Brother Bo the leaders of the Light of Jesus family, the feast builders, so that may they may remain faithful to the Lord and to the community by living host and exemplary lives and leading the flock by word and example, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May our beloved departed enter the glory of heaven where Christ, the firstborn from the dead, has preceded us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for this month of April. For the spread of peace and nonviolence by decreasing the use of weapons by states and citizens, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We bow down as we pray for our personal intentions and all intentions commended to us at this Mass. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who through O oh God, who through the death of your Son gave us the hope of eternal life, Grant that through his resurrection we may obtain the life we long for. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for the good and the good of all His holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, all the religious and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof. roof. But, but only say the word, and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. For orderly communion, please be seated and wait for the ushers to guide you. Just as you, Lord, 
Let's have a moment of silence to cherish the presence of Jesus in our hearts. Please stand. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We call on Brother Bo for his message to Cardinal Joe. What a happy day today because we have in our midst a gift, an Easter gift from the Lord. We want to thank you, Cardinal, for your presence in our midst. We gave you the invitation, and when you said yes, our hearts were filled with joy. And now, we see you today. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you for this Easter gift, Cardinal. Please stand. Before we end this Mass, I would like to... Uh, thank uh, Brother Bo and the rest of you for inviting me to be with you, especially on this very special event in our church, <laughs> Easter Sunday. And also I would like to acknowledge the participation of our brothers and sisters who are physically with us. They are, I have been told just outside this building. And also there are those who uh, prefer to be united with us in our celebration of the Eucharist uh, by using various means of social communication. We also pray for you and also greet you. Happy Easter. My dear sisters and brothers, I know that most of us would like to take pictures with the Cardinal, but unfortunately the Cardinal has got another commitment very soon. What we will be doing is, Cardinal will be here and he will be taking a picture with us, so uh, we'll try, he will try to be in three different uh, pictures, okay? So, so after the celebration, the Cardinal will be in the midst of us, and uh, we'll take the picture from this side to so, so that you will be part of it. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in His compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the good news of salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Shout your praises to Him. Woo! Shout your praises to Him. Happy Easter, my dear Feast family! Like what Cardinal Joe said, we are an Easter people and Hosanna is our song. So let's all shout Hosanna! Let us all shout Jesus is alive! Give the Lord a big hand. Please be seated, Pa. Again, we would like to thank His Eminence, Cardinal Jose F. Advincula, for the Spirit-filled uh, celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Give the Lord a big hand for the gift of the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Manila. First of all, I'd like to inform all of you that thousands came for this grand Easter feast. The plenary hall is in full capacity and we beg the understanding of all the people outside that we weren't able to let in the plenary hall. For those people who have lined up outside, we have set up a viewing area at the lobby of the main building of PICC. So they are all there. So we have an overflow area for the Grand Easter Feast. That's great. Palakpakan niya ang Panginoon. Now leading up to this Grand Easter Feast, we had a Holy Week retreat. Who attended that? Yes. Were you blessed? Yes. Amen. In the Holy Week retreat, we were able to walk literally walk here inside the PICC to the different gardens that we have set up and many attend attendees have told us that they were refreshed, that they were really inspired and healed by the experience. Today, we will walk through another garden. In the Holy Week Retreat, we walk through the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane, but today we will walk through with the Lord in another garden. But before that, I have very important announcements for all of you. First, we would like to invite all of you to attend Feast Bay Area every Sunday at the Aliu Theater. Ah, mga suke, nandito. Kaya palang lalakas ng boses. Please attend our feast every Sunday at the Aliu Theater. Uh, first session is 8 to 10 a.m. Second session is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And our third session is 2 to 4 p.m. So please choose from any of our sessions. And, my dear friends, please save the dates for our various feast community-wide events. We are ready to gather again. Yes! The pandemic is almost gone. Thank you, Lord. So please save the dates for these important events. First, FBA will be conducting a Love Life Retreat for single people. Yes! I'm daming single. All right. June 23 to 24. Meron na ding Camp Kalye! Ang FBA. All right. That will be on June 30 to July 2. Save the dates. Save your money. And help our young people attend Camp Kalye. Um, we also have the FBA Youth Home. Right? That's on April 29. Don't miss that. Now, please turn your attention to the screen and save the dates for the Feast Worship Night. Oh, Feast Worship Night on June 17. Brighter Youth Conference on July 2023. The Jewels Women's Conference in August. And of course, the Feast Conference on November 24 to 26. Okay. We, this is also a very special day for everyone because Brother Bo Sanchez is launching his latest book. And because it's Easter, we want to treat you. Gusto niyo ba yan? Alright. We are giving away free copies of Brother Bo's book. Napaka special nung book because Brother Bo co-wrote it with Nakakainis yung tawag sa kanila eh. He co-wrote it with the Bible nerds of our community. 
That's what they want to be called, ha? Hindi ko po sila tinutokso. But they are Bible nerds. They are our resident Bible experts. And uh, the title of the book is, God Made You Good. Now, sino yung mabibigyan ng free book? Please look under your chairs for the Easter egg. May Easter egg. Tape under your chairs. Ah, go ahead. Yung hindi makayuko, katulad ko, sorry. Pero hanapin nyo yung egg na yan. There are five Easter eggs to be found and you will get one copy each of this brand new book of Brother Bo. Pakitaas nga ang kamay kung may nanalo na. Para uwian na, may nanalo na. Ayun no? Congratulations! You may get your book later at the Feast Books table. May nanalo ba dito? Yun? Yes! Congratulations! Congratulations! Um, Brother Bo will have a book signing later after the Feast outside at the PICC lobby. Again, the book is entitled, God Made You Good. Okay. The introductory price of the book, kasi launching today, Easter, is just 385 pesos. You have to buy now, kasi magiging dollars na yun. <laughs> Joke. 385 pesos ang introductory price. And lastly, for those who haven't done so, please download our Feast app. This is the new Feast app from Google Play Store and from the Apple App Store. There's so much content in our Feast app. So much devotionals, prayers, growth plans, videos, and more. So please don't forget to do it. Kung hindi nyo pa nagagawa, download. Ako, it's in my phone already. Download your Feast app now. And one last thing before we go to our love offering and sacrificial offering, we would like to thank our sponsors for the Holy Week Retreat and Grand Easter Feast. We would like to thank our Platinum Sponsors, Cold Chain Care Professional Reefer Services, and Must See Properties. Thank you very much, Paul, for being our Platinum Sponsor. sponsor. We would also like to thank our Gold Sponsors. Ito, careful kung babasahin yung pangalan. Coco Baby All Natural Premium Rice. Kasi kanina ang nababanggit ko, Coco Baby Oil. Pero hindi sila oil, rice sila. Coco Baby All Natural Premium Rice, Centrum Mavens Corporation, and Nest Nano Sweets. Palakpakan nyo nga ang ating mga platinum and gold sponsors. And to all our silver partners, retreat donors, and all our anonym, anonymous partners, we would like to thank all of you. We praise God for your generosity. Thank you very much. Sa uulitin po. <laughs> okay. Um, now I would like to ask you to please prepare your love offering and your sacrificial offering to God. The sacrificial offering envelope is the red one. And the love offering envelope is the white one. But if you don't have the red one, kasi... And daming nagbigay ng sacrificial offering during the Holy Week retreat. If you don't have the red one, you can use also the white one for your sacrificial offering. Please don't forget to write your prayer requests and your thanksgiving prayers on the envelopes because our intercessors, they pray for you constantly. Now, I mentioned a while ago that thousands, more than a thousand people rather, were, were blessed by the garden experience in our Holy Week retreat. And even now, in the Grand Easter Feast, because we still have the Garden of Sacrifice, the Garden of Healing, the Tree of Life, the Tree of Knowledge there, at the lobby and at the bridgeway. So you may visit it later after the feast. There's so many people who were blessed by these gardens. And I'm sure you will agree with me that we want to replicate. We want to replicate the gardens of the Lord so that more people would get to walk in the presence of Jesus. Tama po ba? You agree with me? So we want to do that. But in order for us to be able to do that, we need your generosity. 
Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice now by offering his life for all of us. May the sacrifice of Jesus compel us all to give our sacrificial offering there at the Garden of Sacrifice in the lobby after the feast. Jesus also offered his life because of his great love for us. And my dear brothers and sisters, may the love of Jesus compel us as well to give our love offering to him. Please all raise your love offering and sacrificial offering envelopes. And please say this with me. Risen Lord, I give you my best. Use my sacrifice. Use my offering to make your garden bloom so that more people will get to walk in your presence. Bless me more so I can give more. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now give your offering to the Lord. Let's all welcome to perform a special song number, the country's inspirational div diva, Miss Jamie Rivera, with little wonder sensation of the voice kids, Fabio Santos. Good morning, brothers and sisters. No, it's so nice to be here. Happy Easter. I believe this is the first gathering after the, the, the COVID. Is that true? Yes. And it's so nice to be back here. I am very happy because today, aside of course we're celebrating Easter, this is my second time to sing live the song that I wrote during the, not really the pandemic, but before the Holy Week. It's, um, it's entitled Three in One. And I hope that... Um, Later on, you're going to be seeing it. We will be seeing the lyrics at uh, the back. So I hope you'll sing it with me. And uh, together with me will be uh, Fabio Santos. He's a um, contestant of The Voice Kids. He's so cute. You will love him. So I would like to sing for all of you three in one. Coffee 
you when I rise to help me open up my eyes and see the brightness of the sun. All I need today is my three in one. I delight with cappuccino. I enjoy the macchiato. Love the flavor of espresso. But I'd rather have my three in one. Cause my favorite three in one is the father and the son. And the Holy Spirit too guide me through. Believe that they are three in one. They love you and everyone. They are equal and it's true. Oh my Lord, I believe in you. God the Father's my creator. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit keeps me clean. Cause I don't want to live my life in sin. Cause my favorite three in one. Is the Father and the Son And the Holy Spirit too Guide me through Believe that they are three in one They love you and everyone They are equal and it's true Oh my Lord, I believe in you I need Jesus all day long Got a Father to be true I call the Holy God bless you all. Happy Easter. Thank you. where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid but little do they know a miracle is about to happen Mary discovers an empty tomb and soon the disciples are drawn into a mystery that will change their lives forever through doubt and disbelief they came to understand that Jesus has risen from the dead. A garden as witness of agony to victory. A story of faith, hope, and redemption. A story of love, mercy, and resurrection. draws nearer the tomb and as she does sees that the body of Jesus is gone 
she leaps to the conclusion that he has been stolen. The distress of this opens the door to what she's not wanted to give voice to. No. No, 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 no. Please. Where? How could they take it? How could they take it? How could they? How could he leave me? He just left me. Mary sinks to a seated position and weeps. That was how it went at early morning. And then I heard a voice, hazy, like morning light. A man was speaking to me. Mary speaks the words of the man as she hears them. Dear lady, why do you weep? Who is it you are seeking? I couldn't lift my head, my eyes stung. I could only suppose he was the gardener. So I said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him. And then he said my name. Mary. And I knew it was him. Mary, he said, standing right there in front of me. I think he said, it is good to see you. I wish I'd responded with something poetic, something worthy of the moment, but all I could think of was, all I came out was, I, I brought the mirror. He laughed. Faithful anyway, right? I hope so. I... And then I saw his hands, pierced. And then I remembered the nails, and the blood, and the agony, and Mary, Mary, do not dwell inside old pain. I am risen, and I will ascend to my father. Your mother will want to see you. He nodded. Go to our friends and tell them, I am ascending to my father, your father, to my God. Yes, yes, of course I will. But first, can we just, I just want to stay here with you, just for a little bit. Mary, you must not cling. This is a beginning, but only if you begin. Yes, so tell our friends, and we will share a table together again. A beginning, I promise. Go, tell them. Yes, right. Mary rallies and begins to leave with energy and purpose, but quickly stops herself. She turns back to Jesus with this last note of intimacy. It is good to see you. Mary leaves and stops. I hated to leave him, but I was also so excited to share this wonderful news with Peter and the disciples. With joy, I returned to them and told them that I had seen the Lord. Listen, everyone, I said, Jesus is alive. I have seen him. That's why the tomb was empty. He isn't there because he's alive. Why had we ever doubted? Jesus told us that he had to die, but he would rise again in three days. That's why the chief of priests had posted a guard at his tomb. Sometimes we can be so slow to understand. So slow to recognize who walks among us. But wonder of wonders, the cross and the empty tomb reveal the depth of God's love for us. I came this morning in darkness, bearing spices, but I leave this garden in the bright light of faith and carrying with me 
his promises that will last forever. Brothers and sisters, friends, today is Easter Sunday. It is the day that we rejoice in and we are glad in it. Amen? Amen. But what does it mean to us now that we are celebrating this wonderful celebration? At this moment, brothers and sisters, friends, loved ones, as we are here basking in His presence, let us allow the Lord to fill us up as we meditate, reflect on the beauty and grace of this gift that is Easter. Not just for today, but every day of our lives, wherever you are and what you are going through, whether you're here in the plenary hall or outside, I invite you to take this moment Sit up straight, relax, breathe in, take in God's love, take in His light, His strength, and exhale. Once again, can we do that? Breathe in, take all of His love, His healing, His forgiveness, exhale, and release all your worries, all your cares, all your fears, all your anxieties, all your burdens, all the crosses that you have been carrying up to now. And invite His Holy Spirit to envelop you and help you see today, Easter, as God sees it. And moving back, moving on from our Holy Triduum, these past days that we've been experiencing God's love, His presence, the challenge is now that often after celebrating Easter Sunday, tomorrow, will you be going back to your regular routine? Or will you bring the Easter experience to wherever you are? Think about this Easter season, friends and recognize how God has been present in the days, not just today, but in every day of your life. If it's all right to take a relaxed posture, to close your eyes, breathe in once again, breathe out. And now we take a few moments of silence to reflect on His presence today. brothers and sisters in your posture of reflection think about the things that you have experienced this past days what are you grateful for be specific about it maybe it's a friend you've encountered after so long nakita ka lang kayo ngayon this holy week or this lenten season maybe it's a gift for a special meal dahil you've been fasting you've been abstaining but the moments that you've experienced God's providence, you are grateful for that. Maybe it's about a shared time you've had with a loved one, a friend, a family. Or during this holy week, someone prayed for you. Someone said something wonderful to you. Or maybe you prayed for someone else. Maybe not face to face, but in your alone time with the Lord. Recognize this wonderful experience of Easter and allow His resurrection to come alive. Again, we breathe in, we breathe out.
now, brothers and sisters, as you pay attention to your feelings, to what is coming in, what you're experiencing, ask yourself, where is God present in my Easter experience? Where is He right here, right now, through what I'm going through? What does He want me to do? What are the next steps? Like Mary, who encountered Jesus for the first time after the resurrection, she too asked. So today, dear friends, have you experienced God's love? Have you experienced His forgiveness? His mercy? His abundant joy? Or are you still reaching out, search, searching for it? Again, we breathe in. Breathe out. Finally, what are you looking forward to? Think about the things that you are hopeful for. What are you expectant for the Lord to do for you this Easter season as we begin a new life, a new step, a new day? Offer these things to God and ask for His anointing, ask for His blessing, for your hopes and dreams to come alive and invite God to journey with you throughout the rest, not just of this Easter season, but throughout the rest of your life. For you are an Easter people. We are an Easter children. Let His presence come alive in you. And together we pray in the words that our Lord Jesus Himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen and amen. To pray through the night, a bearable song, the world on your mind, betrayed by the kiss of a friend that you would take in by your own free will, rejected in. Disowned by those you came to hear. Strips of your clothes, you were mocked, you were beaten. Made a king of fools, a crown of sorrow driven deep into your brow. Yet you made no sound. What you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away is you love me as I am. They call for Barabbas, the king for. 
Great in your kindness That rags on the streets Drape with the weight of the world on your shoulders As you climb that hill A burden far too great for flesh and bones to bear you stretch out your arms as you welcome those roving nails. Your body frail. The very hands that shape the world hung up to bleed. Lifted on high, crucified him on noon. No sin. The Nazarene. The Son of Man, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, given to die. While you went through the lonely, I'll never understand what blows my mind away. You love me as I am church I said happy Easter church can I invite everybody to stand up as you stand up can you just shake your hands and as you're shaking your hands I want you to imagine that you're shaking the old you're shaking the dust you're shaking the pain away you're shaking what has been because today is a brand new day Happy Easter again, church! How many of you believe that there is no event that happens in the Christian life that is more powerful, more significant, more life-changing than today? Raise your hand. You believe that? But can I, can I just pop your bubble just a little bit? I want you to know that just because it's Easter, it doesn't mean that after you, you're done here when you go home that your problems will magically disappear. That's not going to happen. Some of you came here with your bodies 
in physical pain when you go out when you're done you're probably still gonna be in pain some of you came here and you are in financial debt by the time you're done here guess what you'll still have that debt some of you came here and, and, and you don't have money in your pocket guess what by the time you go home you you probably won't have money in your pocket except that maybe the person beside you might treat you for lunch I don't know maybe God's gonna send that person <laughs> some of you came here and and you feel like you got the weight of the world on your shoulders I'm telling you when you leave chances are you might still experience that but can I give you a word that will set you free right now may I Jesus said in John 16 verse 33 in this world you will have trouble that's true in this world there will be problems there will be disease there will be strife there will be difficulties that's bad news but Jesus didn't end it there Jesus said in this world there will be trouble but take heart be of good cheer have courage because Jesus says I have overcome the world so you want to hear some good news you want to hear some good news to people here in the front you want to hear some good news to people there you want to hear some good news all the way there how about you up there you want to hear some good news okay listen up listen up here's the good news in spite of all the troubles that you go through in this world the good news is you shall overcome can I hear the voices of all the overcomers hallelujah today we praise the King of Kings the Lord of Lords he is the chain breaker he's a grave robber he's a storm stopper he's a life changer and his name is Jesus come on celebrate because today love conquered death 
Love paved the way. Love opened the door so that you can I can be free. And so I want you to declare this part as we sing and as we worship that this will be your anthem. I want you to know that you're not walking in defeat, but you're walking in victory. You're walking on the mighty, unshakable, unconquerable name of Jesus Christ. So let's sing that with conviction. Amen. Give a big, 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 big shout for Jesus. We praise you today, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. Woo! <laughs> so good. So good. How many of you are being blessed today? How many of you believe that God is here and God is alive and God is touching and God is healing and God is blessing? Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. <laughs> Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today I want to preach a very simple word. I have seen the Lord. Everybody say that. I have seen the Lord. One more time. I have seen the Lord. If you watched Avatar, and I'm presuming that some of you did because it's, you know, one of the, not one, the biggest, uh, most watched movie of all time now. In the Navi tribe, they would greet each other by saying three words. I see you. 
and, and me, you know, kind of like layering upon that, the, the kind of like the interpretation I have, it's like, I see you as an individual person. I see you as a human being. I see you as precious. I see you as valuable. And because I see you, we can have a relationship together. So okay, humor me. I want you to turn to somebody beside you and maybe not just one, but maybe a few of them and, and, and tell them, I see you. Now, wait, wait, wait. Before you do that, don't, don't say, I see you. No, you've got to pause between each word. And then you, you, what you're saying is, I see you. I recognize you. You are important. You are valuable. And, and I see you means that we can have this relationship. So go. Go, 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 go. And how many of you can say this with me that you see the Lord? Everybody say, I see the Lord. Oh yes, I, I, I see the Lord. I see the Lord. Oh, amen. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I didn't plan to do. Can you sit down for a while? Yeah. We need, we need to thank some people who have blessed us so much. Right now, there are hundreds upon hundreds of people outside this room that cannot come. And we just want to recognize them. There, there, there are two groups, the one here, and then we even have um, uh, in the main building uh, a number of people who are there, and there's projectors, and they're seeing us now. But we just want to give all of them a big hand. Thank you for staying and being part of this gathering. Thank you so much for those watching online as well. God bless you. God be with you. We want to thank the people who've gathered us together for the past three days. We want to thank our leaders. You know, I really feel embarrassed when, when some people think that I'm still the overall leader, like, like in the prayer of petitions. They, they say, you know, Brother Bose, and then and Cardinal greeting me. You know, I, I feel embarrassed because I'm no longer the leader and the responsibility and the pain and the burden is not on my shoulders anymore. It's with other people, but they're not getting recognized. But anyway, I, I know it's just out of habit, but I just want to tell you now that I am like you. I'm a member and uh, they, they put me here on stage because, you know, I'm, I'm a servant and, and I, I serve if they tell me to serve and I will serve, but, but I want to recognize Alvin Barcelona, our leader here, and he is my leader. I want to recognize Didoy Lubaton, who is like the admin guy who, who takes care, manages everything, and thank you so much. All the feast builders, thank you, thank you for your service, guys. Maraming maraming salamat. God be with you. God bless you. Thank you. We, we want to thank Paolo Galia for directing this whole three days. SVR TV team, maraming maraming salamat. I want to honor the servants who for the past three days, do you know that they come at six in the morning? All the servants. You, you know, we, me included, we come here, you know, at, 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 you know, a few minutes before or even exactly at the time that we sit down. The servants, they, they come here at 6 in the morning. And then what do they do? The whole time they don't sit down. <laughs> They're there standing up, just serving all of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you so much. Oh, Hey guys, I see you, servant. I see you. I do. And God sees you. He really does. Amen. Everybody say it again. I have seen the Lord. 
I have seen him in my life. You believe in that? Can I give you, can I give you one minute? Okay, pick a partner, person A, person B, and then take 30 seconds each. 30 seconds each. Look back at your life. Where have you seen the Lord work in your life? Is there a few incidents, but you have to pick one. One moment where you saw the Lord. He worked in your life. He rescued you. He blessed you. You felt His presence. You, you heard His voice. You saw Him. You saw Him walk in your life. Can you pick one? And in 30 seconds, take turns, person A, person B. Choose one and then share. Go! Okay, transition now to person B. Person B will start sharing in a while. Amen. Amen. I can see my wife crying as she was sharing with her mom. So good sharing. Good sharing. Can, why, why, don't we, why don't we all stand up and give a hug to your partner and say, say thank you for, sh for, for this time of sharing. And, and everybody say again, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have seen the Lord. Whew. Amen. 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 Okay, please be seated. I can tell you story after story after story of how the Lord has been in my life and I've actually really seen Him at work. And, but, but I need to pick one, so I'll, I'll, I'll share. One of my favorite stories. I was 14 years old when my mom came up to me and said, Bo, my friend gave your name in this Bible quiz. And it's going to be on national TV. And she was so happy and giddy sharing it to me. And I said, at that time, I was already preaching. I was 13, 14 years old. I was preaching already. And so I told my mom, Mom, I, I didn't study the Bible to join Bible quizzes. And then, you know, moms, moms, raise your hand. You, you've got a way of, no matter how much kids protest, You've got a way of making things happen. <laughs> you know, and, and I said, Mom, Mom. You know, when you deal with your mother, you cannot just say one no. You said, no, 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 Mom, no, Mom, no, no. 
but no matter how much you say no, you know, things still happen. And so, because they have a, they have a tool in their toolkit, it, it, it's two words, Man, maternal manipulation. That's what mothers do. And so she, she just smiled at me, mom, no, 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 no. And then she just smiled. And then a few weeks later, I receive a letter from the organizers. I, I was supposed to report to the TV studio for the Bible quiz. Oh, mom. And so I go, I, I, I win uh, on, that, on that first quiz. They told me to go back to the second week. I won again. They go back to the second week. I won again. Two years. Two years going back and forth to this TV studio. After two years, I was 16 years old. And it was the finals. And I was competing with the best and the brightest. These kids, they memorized the Bible. Like memorized. I didn't. I would use it to preach, right? So I, I didn't, but, but they were there. And, and I remember that the score was tied. And then one of the, at the very end of the quiz, there, there was this, um, we were given rectangular car, white cardboards and a pencil pen. And the host said, fill in the blanks. And they, they could get any verse from the entire Bible. Okay? And then the host said, Luke 1, 35. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And the blank of the Most High will overshadow you. Do you know what happened when, when that question was asked of me? Ask me what? My mind became blank. <laughs> I did not know the answer. And the blank of the Most High will overshadow you. Luke 1, 35. Seven seconds. And the seven seconds starts now. Seven. Six. Five. And I put my pen down. And I said, I don't know the answer. Four. Three. Two. When, 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 this, when that second to the last second came a word leapt in my heart and it was so strong I almost jumped out of my seat I grabbed the pen and I wrote down the word that came out power wrote down power and then the TV host said and the answer is and the power of the Most High will come upon you I won that quiz I won the finals. My prize was a trip to Jerusalem. Now I want you to know that's not the trip to Jerusalem you're thinking of right now where there are chairs and that you're supposed to go. No, it was the real trip. And God navigated everything so that I would be in Jerusalem when I was 16 years old. Not knowing that 10 years later, I would lead my first pilgrimage. And that for the next 30 years of my life, I would be leading pilgrimages to Jerusalem. That God somehow prepared me. Now, if you look back at your life, you will find the same God walking in your midst, just engineering circumstances preparing you for what you're doing now do I hear a loud amen? amen can can you honestly tell me I have seen the Lord I have heard the Lord I have felt the Lord in my life amen it's amazing when you understand that the Easter truth that Jesus is alive is not just a historical event because we see a Jesus who is really alive in our lives. Now, please stand. I know it's up and down. Sit down and stand up. Sit down and stand up. But that's okay. It's Easter. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want you to park that, that, that idea that you have seen the Lord um, in your life. 
I, I believe God's specialty is, you know what God's specialty is? Ask me what? Resurrection. God, He enters our lives and He takes what is dead in you and He raises it up. He turns tombs into wombs. That's what God does. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. That in your darkest moments, what God does is He lets His light penetrate through that darkness and He blesses you abundantly. This is the God that we worship. Now I want you to think about this story. Let's backtrack a bit. It's not yet Easter. He's hanging on the cross and then there are two thieves on the right and on the left. Familiar? Yes. And then he says to one, because that one said, hey, we're, 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 we deserve this. He was talking to the other thief. You remember? We, we, we deserve this. And then he tells Jesus, remember me. Please remember me. And then this is what Jesus said to the good thief. Now, now why, why, why good thief? Now, he, no, he, he did not, like before, before climbing, a, entering a house, he, he does not wipe his rubber shoes so that it will not dirty. No, no that's, not, that's not good, good. You know, but, but there's something about him. That's why people call him good. In Luke chapter 23, verse, verse 42, it says this. Let's read together. This is what Jesus said to the guy. Ready? One, two, three, go. I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Say that again. Now, I know what you're doing. You know what your mind is doing? You're translating. And you're, you're translating the word paradise to heaven. Yes or no? Admit it. Admit it. So, so this is what you're hearing. And this is what you're reading. Jesus told the good thief, today you will be with me in heaven. Yes or no? Okay. You're not wrong. It's okay to do that. But you don't capture the original meaning of what Jesus was saying completely. Ask me why. Because the word paradise in Greek means paradiso. And what does that mean? Ask me what? Louder. Drum roll, please. Paradiso means. You see, there was a Greek Bible, Septuagint, where, 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 where people who knew Hebrew and Greek, and for the first time, every time they saw this word, they put paradise. What does paradiso mean? One more time. Drum roll, please. It's the title of our Holy Week retreat. Garden. Jesus was telling the thief, I assure you, today you will be with me in the garden. And Jews, when they hear the word garden, there is only one garden in their minds. It's like a glowing hyperlink. Click, move back to page two of the Bible. Garden of Eden. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you getting excited? Are you getting excited? You know, what, what, what's this? What, why is Jesus telling the guy, Garden of Eden, I'm going to see you in the garden. It's not just heaven. I'll tell you why. The Garden of Eden is not just in heaven. It's also on earth. It's the overlap. It is the portal. It, it is the station number 934 in Harry Potter. It's the closet in Narnia. It's that point where, where, where heaven and earth meet. It's, it's, that, it's, not, it's not just the past in Genesis. By the way, in the last book of the Bible, Revelations, the last two chapters, the garden appears where there is a river and there's a tree of life. So is the garden of Eden in the past? Is the garden of Eden in the future? Or is the garden now? I'm telling you, in different parts of the Bible, there are little pockets of Eden that bursts out. Jacob in stairway, Bethel, burning bush, Moses, 
burning mountain in the wilderness, Isaiah and the angel, Ezekiel in the refugee camp in Babylon, with the, with the bones, OMG, transfiguration, Peter, James, John, Jesus, shining in his whole glory with, with, with Moses and Allah. My dear friends, there are moments in your life when Eden bursts. Eden, it's not a past, it's not a future, it's not a heaven, it's not an earth. Because the garden is not a place. The garden is a person. Jesus, he tells the thief, Hey, I assure you, today you will be in paradise. Did he say that? Mm, no, 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 no. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. The garden is not a garden without the gardener. The garden is the, the, the garden becomes the garden because God is there. Do you understand me? Where were Adam and Eve, they walk in the cool of day with God beside them and they chit chat and they laugh and they commune and they fellowship. This is the garden. The thief was Adam. Do you know that when Adam and Eve rebelled against God in Genesis 3, God had a mission, and you see it all throughout the Bible. From Genesis 3 onwards, God, God had one mission, to bring people back to the garden. That's all he was doing, trying to bring people back to the garden. You don't want to go? I'll, I'll still wait, and I'll still find a way, and I'll still find a way, and I'll try again to bring you back to the garden. And when Jesus was on the cross, the thief, he symbolized Adam. And Jesus said, it's time. It's been too long. You've been away for too long. Today, I assure you, you will be with me in the garden. In the garden. And it's... Everybody do this. Everybody do this. Put, put your two hands like fists on, on, on both heads. On your, on, on. And then you do this. Is the Bible mind-blowing? Is the Bible mind-blowing? Just, this is incredible. <laughs> you know, this thief... He messes up with your theology. A lot of people think that to enter, to be saved, you have to be baptized. You have to say the sinner's prayer. You have to go to church. You have to tithe. You have to serve in a ministry. Yes or no? This thief did not do a single one. He was never baptized. He never said the sinner's, the proper sinner's prayer. He never went to church. He was not a good guy. But he did the one thing that Adam did not do. Remember Alvin's talk? What's the, what, what, what he said? Probably the real test was not the eating of the fruit. Probably the test was when Jesus came looking for Adam. Instead of saying, the woman you put on the garden, that's why I fell. Instead of doing that, maybe the test was to say, oops, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry, God. And you know, remember, remember what Alvin said? Maybe the Bible will be very short until Genesis 3. It ends, right? But that's what the thief did. The thief said, I deserve this. Jesus, remember me. Remember me. 
Amen. Amen. Let's be seated, everybody. I need to move on. Resurrection. Resurrection. John chapter 19. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Follow, Jesus died already here. Following Jesus' burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices and the long sheets of linen cloth. Tell somebody beside you, your mind will be blown again. The place of crucifixion was near. Hey! Hey! May garden pala dun ulit. And now that you know how... The Bible is meditation literature. You know, you've read this many times. You've heard it from the gospel many times. May garden pala. And again, glowing hyperlink. Click. Boom. Page 2 of the Bible. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I need to see the similarities between, between the Garden of Easter and, and the Garden of Eden. My dear friends, what happened here? You see, you don't read the Bible. You meditate the Bible. The, the, the biblical authors, they wrote the Bible not to be read once, but to be read thousands of times. Are you listening to me? So let's read that verse again. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. In the Garden of Eden, I want you to think about this. St. Paul, he meditated the Bible. And so in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul calls Jesus the second Adam. Everybody say second Adam. Because this is the difference. Everybody say, I'm listening. In the Garden of Eden, the first Adam did not trust God and was brought down. In the Garden of Easter, the second Adam, he trusted God and was lifted up. Now think about that. Adam and Eve, they wanted to go up. Why? They were already like God. That's what Genesis 1.27 says. But that was not enough for them. They wanted to be God. Everybody say, they wanted to be God. So Adam and Eve wanted to go up. You know what Jesus wanted to do? The second Adam, he wanted to go down. He was already God. But what he did was he went down to serve us. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9, one of my favorite passages in all of the New Testament, I want to read it with you. One, two, three, go. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in the obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Let's read together. Verse 9. Therefore, what did God do? He elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. My dear friends, do you want to go up? Yes. Go down. That's what the gospel is. You want to go up? You want to be promoted? Go down. Tell somebody beside you, serve. That's it. That's the gospel. And that's why we don't hear. We don't understand this. And trust that in due time, God will lift you up. That's the Garden of Eden. That's the lesson of the Garden. Now, we go. Everybody say, I'm listening. Everybody say, I'm still here, Bo. In John chapter 20, we continue the story. Mary, it was, the, it was here, Nicole, sharing you, dramatizing it this morning. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white robe angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus has been lying. We continue. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her, because they have taken away my Lord, she replied. And I don't know where they have put him. 
She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she did not recognize him. Everybody say she did not recognize him. Raise your hand if sometimes God is there, you don't recognize him. Sometimes he already is speaking to you, but you're stubborn and you don't hear him. How many times you, 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 you know that God is there, but, but in, your, in your disobedience you say, no, I don't recognize him. That, that's what happened. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked, who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Glowing hyperlink, glowing hyperlink, glowing. I am so excited. You know, the, it, she mistook Jesus for the gardener, but was it a mistake? The gospel writer was winking at you 30,000 times in that word. He's saying Jesus is the new gardener. Garden of Eden is under new management. And, and the first gardener, Adam, who was appointed by God, because in Genesis 2.15 it says, And the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it, but he fumbled, he stumbled, he fell, he didn't do a good job. Well, guess what? A new gardener is in town. He's going to make all things right. He's going to make all things right. And this gardener is here in your life today. And you know why he is going to do all things right? Ask me why. While the first gardener wanted to go up, this new gardener will go down. And he will humble himself and he will serve you. And he will be a king of a kingdom of servants. That's the kingdom of God. Now, think about this. And I, I, I really, it's 15, verse 15. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Verse 16. This is, this is the exciting part. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried, Rab Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. She recognized him, finally, finally. Because 10 chapters before, Jesus said these words. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so when Jesus called Mary by name, Mary, Mary, Mary recognized. My dear friends, raise your hand if in your life you recognize his voice. Has God been speaking to you? Has God spoken to you in the past? Yes? Yes? People ask me that question a lot. Brother Bo, how do you recognize God? How do you know if God is speaking to you? It's a common question I receive. And full disclosure, I, I have. I have heard God many times in my life. And, and it's not an audible voice. It's not something, you know, with thunder and lightning. No, it's, it's something, something so normal. But, but, but God speaks. And the way I answer that question, Brother Bo, how do you know if God speaks to you? This is how I answer. You want to know? Yes. When I got married, I made catastrophic mistakes in interpreting my wife's voice inflections, facial signals, hand gestures. I remember in the first year of our marriage, I had a two-week mission trip. So I was away from home. When I arrived home, I had to go to an elders meeting right away. So I, you know, I said, hi, sweetheart, I miss you. Sweetheart, I have to go. I have an elders meeting. Very important. Now I have to be there. Is it okay? And she told me, Ikaw bahala. <laughs> so ako naman, engot, punta. 
after the elders' meeting, I come home. Alam mo, summer yun. Pagpasok ko, lamig ng bahay. North Pole. And my wife was not speaking to me. And immediately, I knew there was something wrong. And I said, sweetheart, what's wrong? She looked at me. The Snow Queen. What do you think? And I kind of like figured it out already. I said, is it because I went to the elders meeting just after my trip? But sweetheart, you said, ikaw, bahala. So ako bahala. I want you to know, husbands, raise your hand. Is this familiar? We make those mistakes because we do not know how to interpret. We do not recognize her voice. We don't. What happens is this. Of course, now, 25 years later, I am a Maru expert. I mean, I still make mistakes, but you know, I know what it means. Of course, ikaw bahala, you know what it means? Ask me what? It means, ikaw bahala sa buhay mo kung gagawin mo yung pinaplano mo. You know, now I'm an expert, right? 25 years later. In the same way, to recognize God's voice, it takes relationship. And it takes a long time for you to discern, okay, this is what God wants. Okay, this is what not God wants. And then in chapter 20, verse 17, it says, Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to my father, but go find my brother, my father and your father to my God and your God. Don't cling to Everybody say, don't cling to me. Very short. Because Mary wanted Jesus to be the physical Jesus that she was relating to for the past three years. But Jesus is no longer the physical Jesus. He is the risen Jesus. And in our lives, your relationship with God will morph and transform because you are getting to know more and more and more and more about who God is. The more you get to know about God, the more your image of God changes, your relationship with God changes. Do you understand me? And then we... We, we move to this. I, I need to read this. Can, can we all stand up? Next verse. Next verse. Mary Magdalene found the disciples. This is how the story ends. I'm ending now. I'm ending now. Oh, love it. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. This is how the story ends, and this, this is how the story must end, because this is a call from God to every single one of us to go out into the world and to tell them about Jesus. But you cannot go out into the world and tell them about someone that you read in a history book. You've got to go out into the world, this disbelieving world, this world of skepticism, this world filled with doubts, and this, fir this world surrounded by so much noise. You've got to cut through, cut through the confusion and tell them, I have seen the Lord in my life. The world is going to be filled more and more by noise. And, and, and I'm telling you, artificial intelligence is there. Artificial intelligence now writes books and produces videos and, and creates all sorts of things, PowerPoint presentations and what have you. It will continue to produce words. But AI cannot do one thing. AI cannot say, I have seen the Lord. AI cannot, don't clap yet, don't clap yet. AI cannot say, 
When I was down, God lifted me up. When I was broken, God came and mended me. When I was lost and confused, God came and held my hand and led me out of the darkness. When I was sick, God came and strengthened my bones and lifted my body and healed my soul. Friends, only you and me can say that. Only you and me can say that. There is a difference between a fan and a follower. Are you a fan or are you a follower? A follower has a relationship. My dear friends, put your hand over your chest. Look at me. Look at me. You know what God is telling you right now? You know what the risen Jesus is telling you right now? I see you. I see you as a person. I see your weaknesses. I see your hurts, I see your warts, I see your wounds, I see your past, I see your present, I see your future, I see you as my precious one, I see your beauty, I see your glory, I see how beautiful you are, I see you, and that's why we can have a relationship and you will see me in your life every day telling you today you will be with me in the garden and tomorrow I will tell you this is what God will tell you tomorrow. Today, you will be with me in the garden. And the next day, God will just say the same thing. Today, you will be with me in the garden. Ask me, when, when is that? When you pray. Every time you pray, you're in the garden. You're in the garden. Every single time you pray, whether you feel it, whether you're bored, whether you're... It doesn't matter. If you're with the gardener, you're in the garden. <laughs> I need to stop. Let's raise our hands and just, if you can, if it's a comfortable posture for you, and just, just say this after me. Lord, thank you for seeing me. And Lord, I see you. I see you in my life. You've spoken, you've touched, you've healed, you've blessed me so many times. And so here I am. I walk into the Garden of Eden. I fellowship with you. Lord, I pray that right now you would embrace every person. You would just hug each person, please. I, I know you're doing it, and, and I know you're just loving, loving them. You're just loving them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as, as, the, as our leaders will be praying for you and for each area of your life, just always remember where you are. You're having fellowship 
with God in the garden. You're there. God is there beside you. Allow Him. Just allow Him to love you. Allow Him to love you. Allow Him to love you. Amen. Heavenly Father, you see us as people in need of healing. Lord, look with favor, kindness, mercy, and love upon your Easter people. Send forth your healing grace to heal our every physical, emotional, and mental ailment. Lord, we ask you, restore our bodies, restore our minds, restore our hearts, restore our spirits that we may continue to serve you. And as you are healing us right now, please heal all the people, the family, the relatives, the friends, the acquaintances, the loved ones that we are praying for. These we ask in the mighty name of our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, I lift unto you all the young people present. I pray, O oh Lord God, that may your guiding hands walk with them, journey with them every step of the way. Lord, please remind them na hindi po sila nag-iisa. That they are never alone and they will never be alone because you are there. Remind the young people, O Lord God, that you have beautiful plans for them. Though there are times that they feel that they are unworthy, with all these challenges, with all these burdens that they're carrying, Lord, please continue to be that voice telling them that they're your beloved. That you love them so much, that you're already doing something with all these challenges that they're going through. Bless, Lord, their families. Bless their dreams. Bless, Lord, their studies. Bless every relationship that they have, oh Jesus. The future is bright, Jesus. And we're grateful, Lord, for these young people, for indeed they are the next generation of this community. Yes. They are the next generation that will be with this country, cater to this country, even save this country, oh Lord God. And that's what we're declaring. In your mighty name, amen. amen. Mighty Father, I lift up to you every person here that you may bless them with good financial stewardship. Some of the people here, Lord, are breadwinners to their families, even to their extended families, Lord, and some even to their parents, oh God. Bless the work of their hands that they may align with your provision. Almighty Father, I pray for freedom for some of the people here who are buried in debt and financial woes, O God. We claim in faith that you will bless them with the heart that trusts you at the same time that they are working hard to make ends meet for their families, O Jesus. I pray breakthroughs upon breakthroughs in the work that they are doing promotions, O Lord, more clients for their businesses. Align their hearts so that they may serve first and add value. And we know, Father, that money will follow because of your goodness. And lastly, Lord, I pray that you bless their hearts with the good night's sleep every night. Not thinking about money because they trust in the Father that provides for them each and every day. And we claim abundance for their lives more than enough for what they need so that they can be blessings to other people. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Listen, Lord, as you see 
each family, ang aming po mga pamilya. And we're lifting up to you each member of our family. Maybe the ones that we are with right now. Or maybe we are representing them. Those who are left home. Ipinapanalangin namin yung Panginoon and we're praying that you bring reconciliation. You bring back joy. You bring back the happiness. You bring back peace, healing, forgiveness in our families. Baka meron po mga hindi na namin pinapansin. We are having silent wars. And it's an opportunity for us to reconnect, Lord, once again. We ask that we will overflow once again with your love, with your grace. We ask for your protection. Provide for each family here and prosper each family, Lord. Alam namin, Panginoon, that we are going through challenging times. But Lord, the good news is we're still here. And that's why we are just so grateful. There's still hope for our families. It's never too late. Thank you, Lord. We receive your love today, and we're gonna share this to our family each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, at this very moment, we pray for our heart of faith, for those who are struggling in the faith for those who do not see you as you see them right now father for all those who are having doubts uncertainties anxieties when it comes to understanding you to knowing you to loving you for seeing you for who you are in their lives lord god i pray that it is not just a cerebral understanding for oftentimes when it comes to trusting you fully, we do not understand everything, but in believing and trusting in you fully from the heart. Lord God, for all of our friends and loved ones who we know are also struggling in the faith, meet them where they are. Lord Jesus, meet them as they are, as is where is. Because we know when it comes to faith, oh Lord God, you're always there for us. You will never fail us. You will never abandon us. You will never forsake us. And for those here right now and those watching, maybe they're going through still their Good Friday. Lord, empower their faith that they too will experience their Easter Sunday sooner than expected. This we pray in your most holy and mighty name. Amen. Can we all put our hands to our hearts? Lord, if it's not too much to ask, we pray for our personal selves. Kami naman din, Lord. See us. See me. And as we have your gaze, we open our hearts, our lives to you. We reveal our all to you, our hopes and our dreams, but also our fears and our sins. Turn our mourning into dancing, Lord. Some of us may have self-doubt. Replace it with self-acceptance. For every fear, you conquer it with your perfect love. Help us and remind us, Lord, that when we take care of ourselves, we honor you. Tend to the garden of our hearts. Tend to the garden of our lives. And if you will it, Lord, use us Amen. for your great We receive your love. We keep it. And thank you for welcoming us home to your garden every day. Amen. We can take care of ourselves because you take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God, we think about your church today. We pray for all the church leaders that you have put 
in a position of influence and in a position of power, we pray that you always guide them in your ways. We pray for those people who might have walked away from your church, who have strayed away, and we thank you that you are a shepherd who looks even for that one sheep. We pray for those people who were hurt by church people who have been abused we pray that there was justice but there is also your mercy we pray that you remind all of us today that church is not a building but it's a group of people when someone cares enough to listen or to pray to fellowship and to do life church happens and we thank you for blessing us with this community we pray Lord for the feast this family it's not perfect but you're here and you're changing lives one by one we pray for all the leaders that you have you've called by name that you humble us you direct our steps and you give us the wisdom so that we can guide your flock to the right direction thank you Jesus that you will use your church to give healing to give mercy, generosity, purpose, and above all, to love your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Ama namin sa langit, Panginoong Jesus, itinataas namin ang aming mahal na bayan, bayang Pilipinas. We lift up our country, the Philippines, as we extend this prayer to the whole world. You said in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that if your people humble themselves, seek your face, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, you will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. We pray, dear Lord, that you grant us peace, your peace, grant us justice, your justice, and grant us abundance and prosperity filled with hope and love that can only come from you. We believe, dear Lord, that you have a continuing plan, beautiful plan for our country, for the world. Turn this again into your one huge garden with our new one true gardener, Jesus, our Lord, our risen Savior. In his mighty name, amen. Father in heaven, we thank you that today we receive your love and that your love is here. And we thank you that we can continue every single day live in the garden. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
It's the same Jesus we sing to today. He does not forget. He remembers and He sees every single one of us in this room. He knows. And if we can trust Him to conquer death, then we can trust Him in the here and now. Behold, the tomb is empty. He is risen. He is here. And so we sing this with all that we've got, knowing that we can trust Him. And so we do. We're going to lift up our voices today.
sing it out. power that happened 2,000 years ago his victory is not yet done amen the resurrection power that was present 2,000 years ago is very much present here today do I hear a loud amen so at this moment let's have a brief exercise before we continue this to worship I love that beat man let's continue on let's try to experiment with the room shift this atmosphere with our praises all right i want you to think of one thing that you can't wait to have god or to have jesus's resurrection power just have a hand over it just one thing all right whether it be a relationship an ailment a sickness a disease a business or, or something in your mind that you need jesus resurrection and together we're gonna sing as simple as say hallelujah. hallelujah sounds great right now this time put that thing in your mind that person that thing that business or whatever that it is and imagine that thing 
God's victory is already happening this very moment. So sing it out.
Let's draw strength from the resurrection power of Jesus, all right? We've got a challenge, and that's to take off to the unknown, take off to the people, the least, the lost, and bring them to the garden, for we have seen it. He sees us, because in the garden, His grace is full, His victory is there. And there's a party brewing in in the garden. You want to join in the party? Everybody in the party in the garden? I want everybody to go as crazy as you can, all right? In one, two, three, jump!
Lord, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it once in the beginning, it's now never shall be. World without then, and everybody shout it out! God bless you. Happy Easter. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you for joining us for our grand Easter feast. Brother Bo Sanchez will have a book signing for his newest book, God Made You Good, at the lobby. Once again, thank you for coming. See you next Sunday at the feast. Jesus is risen. Happy Easter, everybody.